Welcome back, Giants fans. The Giants took care of their home game against the Raiders, getting their third win. They're now 3-6 and six on the season, no longer in last place in the NFC East, so that's the good news here. Um, I still wish we were 6-3, and three, but I mean, 3-6 and six is an improvement. They've won two out of their past three, last two home games, so something to build on here going into the Giants' bye. Now, it sucks to have to play Tampa coming out of the bye, but after Tampa, there's a lot of winnable games, so hopefully things get better in the second half of the year. Anyway, for this game, we'll start with the offense as we always like to do here. But first, I want to say Xavier McKinney was awesome this game. I was hoping for this game from him for a long time. He had two interceptions in the Rams game a few weeks ago, but the Giants lost by a lot, so it kind of got swept under the rug. But this is a game where the Giants won. And of course, a performance like that, including a pick six, will definitely be more noticeable. Now, for the Giants offense, Devontae Booker took advantage of a bad run defense. I talked about that in the preview, how I think the Raiders had the 28th or 29th ranked run, rush defense in the NFL. I said rush, rush defense in the NFL um, entering this game. So obviously Devontae Booker was going to have a shot against a bad run defense. It was his former team, revenge game narrative, and it was only a three-point spread. So the game script was going to be somewhat neutral, and the Giants had a chance to run the ball. And did they ever? It was 21 carries, 99 yards, just fell short of 100, but 99 yards and 4.7 yards per attempt. And I think Booker left the game sometime in like the late fourth quarter, like three or four minutes to go. But Elijah Penny came in. He had a nice, he had a nice game as well on the ground. Elijah Penny was five for 35 on the ground. A couple of big runs on the Giants' final drive. So Elijah Penny did what he could as well. And you can say what you want about the Giants' offensive line, how bad they are in pass blocking. I'll give them credit for this game. They were good in run blocking. Now, you know, the Raiders don't have any great defensive tackles, one of them being Jonathan Hankins, the former Giants defensive tackle from a few years back. But I still have to give the Giants' offensive line some credit for the way they were pass or, um, run blocking and opening up some holes. As for pass blocking, they were not that good. We'll go over that later. Anyway, Evan Engram, 30-yard touchdown reception. I mean, look, Evan Engram, you know, he does. Uh, he's hurt us many times, but he also does some good things once in a while. This was one of them. It was a good throw by Daniel Jones. And, you know, we'll talk about DJ in a second here, but I want to talk about this. I just saw on Next Gen Stats. Um, Daniel Jones in this game had 20 passing attempts, which obviously is not that many. Some guys have 40, some guys have 50 sometimes. We've seen games of 60 pass attempts. I mean, you know, Daniel Jones had 20 pass attempts, but he only had three of those of 10 yards or more, which is kind of the annoying part. I just talked about in my recent video about how Derek Carr had more than double the deep ball attempts than Daniel Jones had, despite having an offensive line pretty much just as bad as ours. So Daniel Jones had one attempt over 20 yards, and it was the 30-yard touchdown completion to Evan Engram. So why does Jason Garrett not want to go deep? I still don't know. Um, just because the Giants won this game, it should not mean that Jason Garrett's job is safe. I do think the Giants should still evaluate that offensive coordinator position going into the bye. And if they really do believe that they can do better without Jason Garrett, I'm fine mo moving off of him, obviously. I doubt it's going to happen because they're coming off a win. Once again, two out of three. I don't see that happening, but I feel like the Giants offense, offense can do more. I, I just so far am not too thrilled with what I've seen from Jason Garrett. So I doubt anything changes, but if I were the Giants, I would try to look into the whole situation and say, hey, what can we do better? I'm sure Jason Garrett will go into this bye week and try to see what he can do more. You know, can he do better than what he's doing right now? Um, I'm sure nothing will change. I'm not going to get my hopes up, but still, there's things that this offense can do better. Um, this obviously was not a great offensive game. I still have plenty of concerns about the Giants offense going forward now Kenny Galladay this goes back to it Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Tony combined for only three targets I don't have the snap counts right now for how much these guys played but they were out there a decent amount and you know Galladay had two catches I believe on those two targets uh, I think both of them moved to six on uh, to get first downs Kadarius Tony I forget what his target was but he had a pass attempt in this game that he ended up not passing he ended up taking like a six or seven yard loss but I don't understand how you have two wide receivers who are pretty damn good wide receivers in Tony and Galladay. Yes, Galladay's more proven, but we've seen what uh, what Kadarius Tony can do. And you only have three targets in those 20 pass attempts. I just don't get it. And I know the Raiders secondary has played well this year, but that should not be an excuse to have your two best weapons really in the receiving game combined for three targets. So, you know, while I feel good about this win and whatnot, I feel happy it's going to be a victory Monday tomorrow. 
I still am like not satisfied with what I've seen from the offense. I have to be honest. Anyway, Daniel Jones was 15 of 20, 110 passing yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but had a fumble lost. Um, mostly on the offensive line, I have to say. I mean, I do think that Daniel Jones was not hit very hard. I wish he held on to the ball, but um, the way that the pass rush got there as quick as they did, I mean, it's pretty much on the offensive line. So as I mentioned, the pass blocking offensive line just was not good. Too many plays where Yannick and Gakwe and, um, and Max Crosby were living in the backfield. You can't have that. I, I just, you know, it's frustrating, but there's, there's no one walking through that door tomorrow that's going to change the offensive line. Andrew Thomas is coming back, but that still means our right tackle spot sucks. Our left guard spot still sucks. Will Hernandez has not been that great. Um, Billy Price is not that great. Like, it's just, it's, it's Andrew Thomas coming back is going to help, but, like, we're not going to solve everything, so... I don't know. Having a good left tackle can can you know help with a lot of problems, but um, there's still a lot of guys on this offensive line that I can't trust, and um, we saw it kind of uh, impact them in a negative way when Daniel Jones unfortunately uh, lost a fumble and Jones was sacked three times overall. Now we'll get off the offense once again. Offense, I'm not too um, happy with. I'm not satisfied and. If you think about it, the offense only had 16 points because, you know, most of it came on, not most of it, but six of those points, seven technically came on the pick six. So it wasn't like they put up 23 offensively. All right. So for the defense, Xavier McKinney, who I talked about on the top of the video, had a pick six uh, coming out the uh, coming out halftime, had like an early third quarter interception return for a touchdown. Derek Carr was trying to hit uh, Hunter Renfro on an out route. It was not close enough to the sideline. McKinney made a great play, just beat him to the spot and took it back for six. Um, then there was one, of course, later in the game where Carr, um, uh, I think it was the Raiders' final drive, actually, but he went down the right sideline and McKinney just made a nice play, kind of toe tapped and kept his feet in and got his second interception of the game and the biggest turnover of the game. Well, not biggest because the pick six was, but the, the game ceiling interception, I'll put it that way. So McKinney was big in this game. I mean, McKinney hasn't been that great up until this point, but if he can do more of this, I'm not saying he has to get two interceptions every game, but like just make more impactful plays like we saw tonight or today. Um, it's going to help this team out a lot. So McKinney um, had a great game. Hopefully he builds on that in his young career. Quincy Roche, another young guy who the Giants got right before the season started. He has been playing more snaps because of the absence of uh, Lorenzo Carter. I think Zimenez was out too. So like that was more playing time for a guy like Quincy Roche. And he took advantage of it, had the game-clinching sack, fumble on Derek Carr. I thought for sure when it was 16-23, the Raiders were going to come down and tie the game or maybe go for two points and we would lose by one. I thought for sure that was going to happen. So I'm happy the Giants defense was able to step up one more time. And Quincy Roche got that big sack fumble. I think Leonard Williams recovered that. And that was all she wrote for the game. So Quincy Roche... I don't know what his ceiling is as a player. Obviously, you know, he wasn't taken very highly in the draft and he was released before the season started. So it's not like this guy was the most sought after, um, you know, athlete or just, you know, edge rusher in general. But if the Giants can bring him here and turn him into something, I'm all for that. I would definitely start to play him over O'Shane Zimenez more and get him more snaps. Of course, we want to see Ojalari play the most. And at this point, I don't really have any hopes for Lorenzo Carter. He kind of is what he is at this point. So um, yes, he's coming off the Achilles injury. Sometimes it takes a year to get back from that. But Lorenzo Carter is in the final year of his contract. If we can kind of get Quincy Roche going here and play him more in the second half of the year, I'm all for that and kind of see what he's made of. So we'll see. Um, James Bradbury had an up and down day. I will say he's had a, he had a couple of plays in this one where one of them was allowing the touchdown to, um, to Hunter Renfro kind of ran like a zig route, went in and then went out and he caught it towards the right pile on for the touchdown that was on Bradbury. Then Bradbury later in the game, a little later, like in second quarter, I believe had a defensive holding or illegal contact call against him. So that wasn't good, but he also made a very nice play against, um, against Darren Waller sometime in the first half, he negated a touchdown. He also got burnt by Waller, but thank God Derek Carr missed the pass. I mean, there was one play where I don't know what the route, um, what the exact route was that Waller ran. He might've faked to the outside and went inside or something, but, um, he fooled some Somebody. It might have been James Bradbury, but Waller was wide open and Derek Carr missed him twice actually in this game. So definitely got lucky with that. Seemed like Tay Crowder for the most part had an impactful game. He was good against the run. Once again, had some bad moments against the pass. Same with Reggie Ragland, but that's just kind of what we're accustomed to. We don't have the best coverage linebackers here with the New York Giants. It kind of is what it is, but just playing the run, Tay Crowder was better than he has been the past few weeks, in my opinion. So um, hopefully that is something to build off of here for a young player, once again, like a Tay Crowder. 
And, you know, we had trouble versus Waller, of course. Kenyon Drake, especially in the second half, was destroying us. He had like 70 receiving yards total. And I talked about that in the preview. It's like the, it, a lot of it was like you can see it coming. Darren Waller was going to be tough to guard. Kenyon Drake as the receiving back. We suck at guarding receiving backs. That was going to happen. And then um, Hunter Renfro as well was going to be a tough one. Renfro didn't have the biggest game in terms of yards and uh, receptions, but he scored the touchdown as well. So we struggle with certain guys, but when the Giants got to the red zone on defense, they were awesome. I mean, their their red zone stats were awesome on defense in this game. One of my uh, Twitter friends, WBG84, if you don't follow him, he's a good follow, but he tweeted the red zone defensive stats. Uh, the Raiders had six trips. Uh, the Giants allowed a one touchdown. Of course, that was the Hunter Renfro play. Held them to three field goals, one missed field goal, and we had one sack in the fumble. So obviously, the Giants red zone defense was phenomenal in this game. And if you can have that bend and don't break approach, I mean, and, you know, I'm fine with that. We saw it last week, even when they got um, the Chiefs got into the red zone and they caused the interception on that um, on that play where it hit McKinnon in the head or something. And, and Julian Love got the interception like we've seen examples this year of the Giants. You know, once they get into that compacted area of the red zone and there's not a lot of uh, field to work with, the Giants defense has been a lot better. And it's tough for offenses to score when they get closer sometimes, which is a weird way to think about it. But when there's less space to work with, you got to be so perfect. And when you're not perfect offensively in the red zone, it's tough to score. Now, we've seen a stretch this year where the Giants red zone defense sucked. That was against the Cowboys and against the Rams. They were dreadful in those games. But now it seems like the Giants are more um, are, are doing a better job of holding these offenses to three points or even getting zero points once they approach the red zone. So if they can keep that up, especially like in their next game against Tampa and hold them to three points or even get a turnover or two, um, that would help a lot. I don't think we're going to beat Tampa, but in order to compete with them, the red zone defense has to be the same as it's been the past couple weeks here. So um, yeah, I was very satisfied with the defense the defense has played well for like three weeks in a row now uh, Carolina held them to three held uh, Kansas City to I think 20 last week and then hold this Raiders offense that was one of the most explosive passing offenses in the league yes they were minus Henry Ruggs but only holding them to 16 points and forcing Derek Carr into two interceptions and getting the strip sack fumble at the end it's a uh, defensive performance that I'm very satisfied with. So Patrick Ram, once again, is winning me over. There was a time in the first part of the year where I was like, I don't know if this is the guy. But yeah, Patrick Ram, is, uh, he's our guy as a defensive coordinator. Hopefully he's uh, here next year. I'm definitely willing to say that. As for Jason Garrett, I probably don't want him here next year, but we'll see what happens. If Jason, if uh, Daniel Jones finishes out this year on fire, then maybe he's back, but I think we can do better as an offensive play caller. So anyway, Patrick Ram, good. Jason Garrett, disappointing. Offense, not good. Defense, really good. That's pretty much my reaction to this game. So um, will the Giants find a way to have some big second half run and make the playoffs? I mean, I don't know. I'm not counting on it, especially with the way Dallas is playing this year. Um, Dallas did lose today, so that is a positive. So we gain a game on them, actually. So um, it's funny. I actually had a tweet. I tweeted this after the... Um, this was after the Saints game, I believe. I don't know when it was. Um, October 8th, whenever the hell that was. Anyway, so um, this was actually some right before the Dallas game week five. All right, so I made like a a mini uh, schedule prediction type thing. It's kind of like as a joke, but so far through like five games, it's actually coming true. So I, I kind of mapped out this plan of the Giants getting to nine wins this year. I had us losing to Dallas. It happened. I had us losing to the Rams. It happened. I had us beating Carolina. That happened. I had us losing to KC. That happened. And I had us beating the Las Vegas Raiders. So, so far, we're five for five in this prediction here on this tweet. Now, I have them winning a lot of games in the second half of the year. I have them losing coming out of the bye against Tampa, winning against the, well, I'll do the other hand, winning against Philadelphia, winning against Miami, losing to the Chargers, and winning out their last uh, four games. So can they do it? I don't know. I mean, I have them going, uh, I guess, what would that be, 6-2 and two the rest of the year? So um, if the Giants can find a way to go 6-2 and two in the second half of the year, they would be a 9-8 and eight team. If they can find a way to go 5-3, and three, they'd be an 8-win team. Is that good enough for the playoffs? I mean, probably not, but um, they may have a chance to have an at least respectable record here. I don't think that's enough to salvage the job of uh, Dave Gettleman, but um, if they can find a way to get the seven, eight wins, Joe Judge is probably back. I'm sure Patrick Graham is probably back. Jason Garrett, I don't know. I don't want him back once again. Daniel Jones is probably back if they have a good second half. I think he's probably back regardless. So um, hopefully some jobs will be saved for the right people in the second half of the year if they can kind of play well here and close out the year pretty strong. So will my schedule prediction come true? Hopefully it does because I'm fine getting nine wins, of course, at this point in the year. So 
that'll do it. Hopefully everyone enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully everyone enjoys Victory Monday tomorrow. We have a bye week. Um, I don't know what my bye week content's gonna be. I, I wanna do like a, uh, a questions video. So if you guys have questions, you can either leave them in the comments of this video or I'll do a community page uh, post at some point or even ask on Twitter. So I'll find a way to get to you guys and you guys can ask some questions and I'll try to give my uh, honest answers. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys next time.